dudes? Today you are going to be learning from the one and only Rufus Philpot, amazing, amazing basses, but also a teacher here at scottsbasslessons.com as well. And today he's going to be teaching you everything to do with the jazz blues chord sequence. Now stop right there. It's not just about jazz. Ooh. He's a bad man, Rufus. Rufus, you're a bad man. Now, the jazz blues chord sequence, yes, you can use it in jazz, but it, it's used in so many different other contexts, so don't let that word kid you, okay? If you're gonna go to any jam session out there and not know this chord sequence, well, do it at your own risk. Now, Rufus is gonna teach you the, the chord sequence, he's gonna teach you how to play the chords, he's gonna teach you how to play the walking bass line, and a bunch of other stuff, and there is a download for you as well with a backing track. I will leave the link to that below. Now with that said, Rufus, take it from here. Okay, so in part one, we're gonna look at the basic form of the blues. So in the jazz 12 bar, there's a lot more chords going on than in a rock and roll blues. And in your downloadable PDF, you can see the sequence I'm gonna talk about in front of you. So do have that in front of you to make notes on. So we're gonna do this in the key of F. It's a very common key. A lot of, um, a lot of jazz 12 bars are written in F, you know, Charlie Parker, Kind of favor that key for things like Billy's Bounce, Now's the Time, and so on. So rather than starting in the key of C, I'm going to get you guys going in F to start with. So in an F blues, going from the first bar, we have the one chord, the key of, we're in F, and it's an F dominant seven. Bar two, B flat seven. Bar three, back to F. Bar four can do many different things, but we're going to keep it simple and stay on the F seven. Now, bar five, B flat seven. Bar six often goes to a diminished, a B diminished seven. Then back to F. Now bar eight goes to a D dominant seven, the sixth chord. And this is very different to rock and roll. Bar nine, we've got G minor seven. Bar 10, C seven, the five chord. And then the last two bars, we have the turnaround. So instead of having a whole chord for the whole bar, we got two chords per bar, so a chord every two beats. So we go, last two bars, we go F7, one, two, three, four, F7, D7, G minor, C, and that's it, back to F. So the whole thing, I'll just play it with chords now, you can get an idea, it sounds like this. One, two, a one, two, three, four. So, so that gives you the idea of it. Now I'll walk through that and you can see how this sounds when you have a walking line going through this. And what I did was I wrote out a bass line for you guys and we're gonna look at that a little later on but I'll play that bass line for you now and I'll play it with the chords and a drum little backing track and you can hear how the whole thing sounds. Okay, so in that little example, you just heard the sequence and a walking bass line going through it. Now you're gonna get that actual bass line I played as well in your download, so you can look at it as well. And we're gonna discuss and dissect that as well. But what I wanted to talk about was just the principle when you're starting to play walking bass, don't be afraid to play simply. One of the things that often happens is people are worried about playing a different note on every beat but you don't need to do that. You actually can repeat notes. And we're gonna look at that as we analyze that line. Now, when you're learning the sequence, which is really important to do, there's two ways to do it. You can learn it with the actual names of the chords. So, you know, if we're in F, you go, okay, F7 bar one goes up to B flat seven, which is cool. But the way a lot of guys do this, and it's the way I learn stuff, learn it with Roman numerals. So the Roman numeral system is incredibly useful. So what I've got for you guys here too is I've got the blue sequence written out and I've also jotted down in Roman numerals the formula. That means you can transpose it to any key, which is super useful. So in other words, if F is your one chord, your tonic chord, right? 
if you know it goes up to B flat, well, that's the fourth degree of the scale. So it's the four chord and so forth. So I've analyzed it for you like this. So if you go through the blues like that, you get this formula, bar one, the one chord, bar two, four, bar three, one, bar four, one, then on bar five, up to the four chord, super important, bar six, often that sharp four diminished. So in the key of F, that was that B diminished seven. Then bar seven, back to the one, and bar eight, the super important, the six chord, the dominant seven there. If we're in F, it's a D7. Bar nine, two minor. Bar 10, the five dominant. And then bars 11 and 12, your turnaround. The simplest turnaround we can say is at one, six, two, five. So in F, it would go to one chord, F, six, D7, two would be G minor, and five, you guessed it, C7. That way, if you want to now learn a blues in B flat, you've got the formula in your head and you're like, oh, well, one chord is B flat and it goes to the four on bar two and so on. And you know, if you're, if you're fairly fluent with your scales, you'll know what a six chord is and a two from the root and so forth. So this Roman numeral thing is super useful. And plus just a kind of a real world tip, if you're playing on a gig and maybe someone calls a tune you don't know or something, it's very simple for someone to have to go, oh, it's just a two five in F there's a vamp on a tune. And what they mean if they mean a two five in the key of F is it's the two chord, which is G minor, and the five is C. So a tune like um, Red Baron or something like that does that idea. You know, a lot of the kind of funk tunes like Mr. Magic and so on will be vamps on two five sequences. So it's very easy for musicians to refer to it in that Roman numeral vernacular, that terminology. So definitely get into learning that when you learn this 12 bar blues. Guys, before you go, I just wanted to say a massive thanks for checking out this video. And I also want to mention that we've got something super special going on this month over at SBL. Recently, we debuted the SBL Mentors in the SBL membership, a brand new platform that lets you interact in real time with your favorite bass artists. The SBL mentors are Gary Willis, Justin Rains, Michael League, Ian Allison, and a bunch of other amazing tutors. And here's the best part, we're running a limited time promotion this month, so you can actually try SBL free for 14 days and get $50 off an annual membership when you try it out, okay? So what I've done is I've put a link below so you can go over there, check it out, find out some more details, and hopefully I'll see you on the inside. Now, as always, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed.